I'm going to tell you about a trip that we did to the Falkland Islands in May 2014. The purpose of the trip was to understand the economy, the political situation, and society in the islands. So we interview different people from the private sector, from the public sector, as well as the governor. One of the things that strike me about the islands is that it is a very small territory, population-wise, but at the same time, it's one of the richest territories on earth in terms of income per capita. And they have done that by managing successfully their resources, specifically sheep ranching and fisheries. They discovered oil a few years back and it is expected that they are going to manage oil also successfully. They do that because they have the institutions in place, the rules in place, to manage those resources in an effective way. important aspect in the islands and that is self-determination. In 2014, 99.8% of the islanders voted to keep the status of a British overseas territory. The Falkland Islands is not a colony in three important respects. First, there are no resources going to England. Second, they, if they want to become an independent country, they can anytime they want. And third, if an English person wants to live in the islands, he needs a permit issued by local authorities. The islands are better known for the conflict between Argentina and England in 1982. The current position of Argentina is that the islands belong to them because it is an inheritance from the Spain after independence. And the British think that the opinion of the residents and, and the islanders should be respected. And if they want to remain as, as part of a British overseas territory, they should. Let's talk a little bit about the economy in the islands. We can see in this slide, for example, that the average islander is around three times richer than the average Argentine. In the second graph, we see that from all the British overseas territories, the Falkland Islands is the second one in terms of income per capita after uh, Bermuda. And in the picture, we see a um, dealer, which was the only one we saw in our visit, which gives you an idea of the living standards in the islands. They have achieved this economic success because of three main reasons. First, property rights are highly respected. Second, there is certainty in terms of the taxes and the fiscal rules, especially for foreign companies. And third, politicians have a long-term view. For example, before they started oil exploitation, they decided that the revenues from oil were, were going to be saved for future generations. In this slide, we see the house of the governor, and he plays a very important role. He is the representative of the Queen of England in the islands, and he um, acts as an institutional anchor, we think, which is that he make he makes sure that the decisions that are made in the National Assembly are right and correct for the islands. Uh, according to the Constitution, he has very special uh, powers within the islands. He even appoints the chief of the police and also the attorney general. So in a way, he makes sure that the legal and the justice system in the islands works very well. Let's talk a little bit about the rule of law in the islands. The islanders are a law-abiding society and that probably has to do with the small amount of people but also with shared values among individuals there. In terms of the corruption, corruption is very low and incentives are aligned in the sense that if politicians make good decisions, the results 
are going to return to them and their families. Also, in the islands, the conflicts among islanders are solved informally, and they rarely use the courts. Finally, let's talk about the Falkland way of life. In the islands, people know each other and they do business personally. However, the islands are going through a deep economic transformation from, a, from an agricultural society to a modern society based on fisheries and oil production. That requires some changes, particularly in terms of immigration. More openness is needed towards new immigrants that want to come to the islands and establish themselves there and become residents and citizens. It is well known that immigration is good for society. It fosters growth and it fosters prosperity and it can be very good for the islands.